OK, good morning, everyone. Um, it is 11 o'clock according to my watch, so I think we'll get uh, proceedings underway. Uh, and stragglers can join as we, we go along. I see we've already got quite a crowd gathering. Um, just a quick introduction. My name is Lee Gibson and uh, I work on the Turing Scheme Communications team at Capita. Uh, the first thing for me to do this morning is obviously to um, thank you all for your interest in the Turing Scheme uh, and for taking time out of your undoubtedly busy days to join uh, to join our webinar and learn a bit more about it over the next 45 minutes or so. Um, OK, as you now see on the screen there, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get things underway as we're meeting virtually. Obviously, it's fairly minimal, but if we could ask everyone to uh, remain on mute and keep their cameras off uh, during the webinar, obviously that will allow everyone to concentrate on the presenters and the slides that we'll be sharing. As you'll see there, the webinar is also being recorded uh, and our intention is to share that on our YouTube channel uh, subsequently so there's no need to make copious notes today unless you particularly want to because you'll be able to refer back to the recording okay so i'm sure some of you uh, will have been aware of the Turing scheme and possibly even uh, applied or, or were funded during the first year of the program um, but equally i imagine there are a number of people on the call for who uh, the scheme is totally new and who don't know too much about it. So hopefully um, we'd have managed to strike the right balance uh, for all of you in the information that, that we're going to share today. Uh, this is the first of three webinars we'll be delivering for the school sector, the FE and VET sector, and obviously this one for, for yourselves um, in the HE sector. Uh, as you see now on the slide there, join the webinar, you'll be hearing from various people. I won't introduce them all necessarily by name, but just to say that you'll, you'll be hearing from the Department for Education, obviously from ourselves at Capita, and as you can see on screen there now, our colleagues from the Association of Commonwealth Universities who are working with Capita on the delivery of the programme. Uh, the aim today is to offer, offer you all a brief overview of the scheme and its potential benefits for your students and institutions, uh, to take a look at how applications will be assessed and offer a few hopefully helpful tips on how to create a good application, as well as flagging some of the support and resources um, that we'll have available to help let you navigate through the process. Uh, I should uh, make it clear that there'll be no live questions during the webinar um for logistic reasons really obviously we, we we don't want to keep people tied up for too long and want to give you plenty of time to get on with the rest of your days but we are eager to garner your questions and if you have any during the webinar by all means please feel free to um post them via the the chat function here um and equally you will have an opportunity to submit them should any occur to you afterwards via email to us, which we'll, we'll share the details of later. But our intention is to um, is to garner all of the questions that we receive, uh, collate them, and look at providing answers um, via FAQ documents that uh, that will be shared via the, the website and our usual channels subsequently, and, and also. Um, I'm sure some will be addressed in the various other support documents that, that will be available. Um, I think that is all that I need to say by way of introduction. So I think without further ado, I'll pass you on to the real experts that you're here to, to listen to and hear from today. And to, first off, that is Martin Cunliffe from the Department of Education. Martin. Thanks Lee. Hello everyone. 
My name's Martin Cunliffe. I've spoken to some of you in the past. I work for the Department for Education, where I'm the Communications and Stakeholder Engagement Lead for the Turing Scheme. Uh, again, I'll echo uh, Lee's thanks to you for taking time to attend today's webinar. I'll speak just briefly now to provide a bit of the policy context for you as we start on the second year of the Turing Scheme, which will be supporting placements that take place in the 2022 to 23 academic year. Some of you will already have experience of the scheme from the first year, and for others, this may well be your first time planning an application. In either case, today's webinar will help you to better understand how the scheme operates, how you develop the best possible application so that your students can take advantage of the life changing opportunities that the scheme offers. Our core objectives for this year remain the same to provide the opportunity for students, learners and pupils from all backgrounds to study and work abroad. Supporting people from across the UK to become more globally mobile and culturally agile. Funding for the continuation of the Turing scheme has now been confirmed for the next three years, including £110 million for the 22-23 academic year. To meet our aims as a global education and training programme, the Turing scheme funded projects must focus on four main objectives. These are the same as last year and they are global Britain, levelling up, developing key skills and value for UK taxpayers. The Turing scheme is still again open to organisations from across the UK and the British overseas territories and is a truly, truly global programme. We want to enable you to develop and sustain partnerships across the world, which can provide the best opportunities for your students. When considering destinations across the globe, our only proviso is that all education providers managing mobilities should follow the relevant Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office travel advice, being aware that the situation can change rapidly. The past year has seen COVID-19 causing a great deal of uncertainty, especially around international travel. I hope that those who've been involved in projects this year have already seen firsthand how we have provided flexibility and additional options wherever possible to help projects deal with these pressures. Participants this year have nonetheless been able to take place uh, a huge range of interesting and engaging mobilities and we look forward to seeing what your plans are for the year ahead. For this year the scheme will be working with Capita who've been awarded the contract to deliver the scheme following a competitive recruitment process. We are confident that Capita have the capacity and skills to deliver the scheme. They have more than 35 years experience in supporting more than 180 local authorities and 21,000 schools, as well as being one of the largest IT providers to the UK education system. They will combine their capabilities in digital grants management, education and complex program management to support you in delivering the life changing educational opportunities for participants in the Turing scheme. Our key call to you is that we ask you to take advantage of the opportunities offered by the scheme and the support offered by Capita as you prepare your applications and define your projects. I look forward to seeing your projects develop and get delivered. And that's all that I have to say for now. So I'll hand over to Damien from the Association of Commonwealth Universities and we'll start getting into the detail of the applications. Thanks. Thank you, Martin. Um, so we'll move into the, the slides now and uh, we've got a couple um, on the topic of preparing for your application. So this is just um, a very high level overview, um, but I think it's um, the right place to start. Um, we would like all applicants to be well aware of the policy objectives of this scheme. And uh, it won't be any surprise to anyone who's uh, who's watching that uh, these, for, this, these form the basis of the um, application assessment. So as Martin uh, quickly ran through, the policy objectives are um, global Britain, international engagement, levelling up, um, and uh, we'll also be assessing on positive impact value for money and the design and implementation and monitoring um, of the projects proposed. So all applicants will be asked to answer qualitative questions under these four sections. Um, and there'll be a total of 11 questions in total. Um, applicants will be limited to uh, 500 words per narrative field. Uh, and further, further guidance can be found in the application guide uh, Annex B. And indeed, all of the questions are also 
already uh, published in the application guide and we encourage all applicants to um, to to look at those in advance. Um, finally, on this side, uh, Annex C of the application guide will provide you with any other information that you need to gather when planning your application mobility groups. And just a quick note on, on the weighting. Um, so of those four sections, uh, levelling up and positive impact and value for money carry 30% of the score each and international engagement and design and implementation 20% each. OK, just some things to bear in mind uh, when applying. Um, so. The first and really can't stress this enough, um, the programme guide is quite an undertaking as a piece of um, uh, as a piece of work. Um, there's a, a, a lot of hours, a lot of work gone into preparing this um, and um, the and, and it really should be considered as the sort of Bible for for applying. Um, it provides all of the information that you need to check your eligibility uh, and that's the eligibility from institution level um, right down to um, the nature of the projects that are being proposed. Um, and it will take you step by step through uh, the question of how to apply. Tip number two, know your priorities. So what we were saying here is um, really just consider the qualitative criteria that we've just been through um, when focusing your time on the application responses. Three, very good idea to plan ahead. Um, there is a lot of information already online um, and you can do a lot of work already in terms of um, getting ahead uh, and preparing your application. Four, um, structure your thinking. So um, this is obviously um, something that's going to help you to write clearly. It's also going to help assessors to um, really understand what it is that's being proposed. So subheadings to introduce different sections is a great idea. It makes the um, makes the proposal clear and um, may even ingratiate you to the to the assessors. Five. Work smartly. If there's information you'd like to provide that you think is relevant to more than one application section, please do cross reference it rather than copy and paste the same text multiple times. Uh, and finally, before you submit. Uh, please take a note of your unique application ID and check your application thoroughly. Um, and it's worth noting that applications won't be able to be resubmitted. We will only accept the first submission of an application. Um, so once we receive your applications at the ACU, um, the, um, this is just a, a run through of the, the assessment process. So um, this year, the assessment hub will sit uh, outside of the, the prime uh, contractor capita um, and actually has been recruited from um, uh, as, a, as an independent entity in itself. So the ACU will uh, manage a team of uh, 28 or 29 independent assessors. Uh, Four of those will be senior assessors, one each for the three sectors uh, that are eligible to apply and one uh, advising on the subject of skills and levelling up. Uh, all, our, all our assessors will receive training for um, quality and standardisation and all applications are double marked. Um, discrepancies of, of scoring will be addressed by the senior assessors and a, purport, a significant proportion of applications will also be quality checked at random. Once we receive applications into uh, the hub, 
uh, a formal eligibility check will be uh, undertaken to verify the application is compliant with the Turing scheme eligibility criteria. Uh, at this point, the applications will be uh, handed over for assessment and a concurrent financial capacity check will take place alongside the qualitative assessment. The quality of the qualitative assessment will evaluate the extent to which the application meets the Turing scheme objectives that we've just presented. And at the end of this process, the assessment hub will provide a, a report for the uh, project assessment board, which is a DFE hosted board, including representation from across the devolved administrations. And at that point, I'll hand over to Andrea at Capita. Thank you, Damien. Thanks for that really helpful information. So I'm here just to talk to you about the next steps on the application journey and, um, and talk to you about some really key dates. So we hope that you have received some um, really helpful information here. And what we really would like you to do is start the journey of an application through the registration process. For this year, we have a two part application process. The first one is for you to register um, and registration is required um, on all applications and that is available now. So if you haven't already, we would really encourage you to start your intention to apply for Turing funding now. Visit our website um, and you'll see the link on the home page to take you through to that registration process. We've created a really simple and quick registration process um, and while you're on our website, we'd also strongly encourage you to sign up to our newsletter that will be provided, um, um, including in the Welsh language if needed. Then in the interim period, we would also then encourage you to prepare for your application. So I think we've talked about a little bit earlier about the type of information and the programme guide and the application guides, which are both available. Um, will give you the types of information that you will need to gather in terms of planning your mobility groups, the types of participants um, and also the journeys that you intend to make. We'd also encourage you to talk to us or contact us through our service centre, which we will provide some further information about a little bit later on in this presentation. Um, and then finally, um, applications will open on Thursday, the 31st of March. So all of that preparation that you do between now and then will stand you in really great stead for a smooth and a system based applications process. When we've designed the applications process, we've really thought hard and took quite a lot of feedback from uh, those that were involved in the first year to simplify that journey, to make it a guided journey and to steer you through every step of the way. The system will also allow you to save your applications for later and come back to them and build your application as that information and that collaboration within your organisation builds the fuller picture and your plan uh, begins to form. Thank you. Next. Just wanted to share as well some of those really key dates that we've talked about, just so that you're really clear in terms of intentions on time. So as I've said, the registration portal is now live. That opened on the 28th of February. Um, and then on the back of that, the application form will also then be launched on the 31st of March. As I said, the registration is required for every application. So to do that step now, we'll then make that a much smoother process when we come to application. Applications. The application window is open um, until the 29th of April um, and at that point it will close for all sectors. Um, at that point we will hand over to the assessment hub as Damien's described and then we are aiming to ensure that all application outcomes are communicated to all applicants by the end of June. Thank you. We wanted to use this slide just to remind you of the resources that are now available for you. 
we do have a service centre of grant officers and support teams who are here to receive your inquiries, any questions that you might have, any questions that might come to you after this webinar. Um, and they are really responsive and are dedicated to getting you the answers that you need. They work closely with the Department for Education if there are any policy questions, as it's really our intention to answer your question directly and for you not to have to be fielded elsewhere. In order to make that as simple and straightforward as possible for this for this 22, 23 year, um, we have made sure that it was a single email address for all of our sectors to use um, and we've kept that as simple as possible. Turing dash scheme at capita.com. We've got a wealth of supporting information available to you on the website, including frequently asked questions, our programme guide and application guide. And we'd really encourage you to um, use these to their fullest potential. They are also downloadable should you need to share them within uh, your organisations. We've made sure that the links to the reg registration window and thereafter the application window will be uh, available to you via the website. You don't need to remember a separate URL to get that. We'll make sure that that is on the home page as the registration portal link now is. And if you have registered and you now do have a portal account, we've also ensured that you have a contact us form in that that comes into the very same mailbox that services all the other email addresses so that all of your correspondence comes into a central point and we can build a picture as to the types of questions that we're receiving that will continue to inform our frequently asked questions and any other supporting material that we will provide. Thank you. Uh, I'll hand it back over to Lee to close this session. Thank you, Lee. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Uh, we do appear to rattle through that fairly quickly, but hopefully that's given uh, all of you some food for thought and some information which which uh, will be helpful in preparing, considering your applications. And we certainly hope and look forward to receiving applications from all of you. Uh, as we mentioned previously, and, and I see that there are lots of questions being posted in the um, chat function, so we will be collecting those, taking them away, considering and answering them. Uh, and also, as we said earlier, as you can now see on screen, you can provide further questions if something occurs to you when we finished here today or, or any other time. You can email us there, as Andrea said, at touring um, and as, again, as I said earlier, the intention then is to to use all of those to inform um, FAQs, documents and other support uh, documents and resources that, that will be made available in due course. Um, and I think they're just finally if for anyone who, which hopefully you all will, wants to keep in touch with the latest news from us and about the Turing scheme, again, as already as has already been mentioned, please do go to the website and sign up to our sector specific newsletters. And also it's not mentioned there, but uh, obviously we are on all of the usual social media channels as well. So if you want to follow us on um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, I believe we're on the moment and YouTube. Um, again, links can be found on the website and it would be great if you, you were to follow us. Uh, on any or all of those social media channels, which will also help help you keep up to date with developments. Uh, I think that said, um, then all that remains to do is once again, thank you all very much for your attendance uh, today. As I say, hopefully it has been useful and, uh, and the beginning of your shortening scheme journey for the 22-23 academic year and we look forward to hearing from you in due course. Thank you very much.